Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum uh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for uh, attending this uh, very interesting uh, talk today. Uh, we have a very, very special guest. Uh, she is first uh, a friend, she is a mentor, uh, and she is a woman with a very, very big heart. Uh, we have uh, Miss Larissa Miller from Beacon of Hope. Please give her a big round of applause. Oh. Uh, launched very recently, that, uh, and, and I, I'm not going to go too much into details, but uh, I'd like to give Larissa uh, the stage. She's going to do a small uh, introduction to the project and what the initiative is all about. And uh, after we finish, we're going to have a chance but uh, we were, we're looking for volunteers for this initiative. So uh, without further ado, Larissa, it's all yours. Thank you, Omar. Um, Beacon of Hope is an initiative founded by Her Highness Sheikh Shama bin Sultan bin Khalifa Al Nayyan in 2006. Um, it aims to take life, light, and literacy to children in war-torn or um, impoverished regions of the world. Working with the Young Minds here in the UAE, Khalifa University, we developed a beacon in a box solar light kit that um, we work with youth around the globe. They assemble the light, they get to keep the light, and um, along with the light we deliver a book that was donated by Dubai Cares Reading Nation. Reading Nation was a Ramadan campaign last year that was started by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Um, Reading Nation donates books that we can take with us on our missions around the world in both Arabic and English, basic reading books, and uh, that allows us to unite light with literacy. Um, we work, we focus on youth, as, as youth essentially um, don't have the preconceived notions that the lost generation, which I call my generation, um, we have our biases, we have our hatreds, we have our habits already established, and while we can fix those, it's the youth who is, a bit, who is essentially a blank slate. And um, it's through the youth that we can teach tolerance, um, we can teach empathy. Uh, they will be the stewards of the planet, they will be the ones to temper the turmoil, and um, without regard to race, religion, or gender, the youth are the way forward. So we focus on youth through Beacon of Hope. Um, Her Highness Sheikh Ashama is a proponent of sustainability in all things. Um, I also have the pleasure of working with her, um, with her sustainability company. And um, as chairman of her initiative, Beacon of Hope, we focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, trying to make an impact not only on the planet, but on society, um, impacting three goals specifically, um, clean energy, quality education, and collaboration and partnership. You are only as good as the people who are on your team, and I'm fortunate to have a wonderful team. Um, Omar is, is on my team. My, my, uh, many of my other team members are here with me today. And um, they represent Her Highness proudly and very well. And they have allowed us to take an initiative which is in its infancy essentially because it was only started um, a short year ago from an idea that, that Her Highness and I had in it is today and I will share with you where we are, how we got where we are, and where we are going. It all starts with the light. So we focus on renewable energy. We take this light with us to challenged regions of the world, providing children with a lesson in solar and renewable energy. And um, they're taught to assemble their light, which gives them a sense of accomplishment at the end, and they get to keep this light. Um, last year, we, took, we delivered 10,000 lights. Um, we were Li Liberia, Morocco, and most recently Jordan. And this year, we're on track to deliver upwards of 70,000 lights. Um, 
As I said, we were in Jordan, Liberia, and Morocco. We will be going to the UAE refugee camps in Erbil, um, in Greece. Essentially, they, um, they came to us organically. We started with Liberia, and that was through collaboration with the American um, recording star, Akon, um, who has Akon Lighting Africa. We formed a collaboration, and he invited us to Liberia, which was essentially the global start of Beacon of Hope. Um, we went to COP22, working for a sustainability company, COP22, the United Nations Climate Change Summit in Marrakesh, was very important. And while we were there, and I took my Beacon of Hope team, we ventured into rural Morocco, which I will again share more um, with you. And last weekend, we were in Jordan um, at two of the Syrian refugee camps. Um, we, very shortly, I'll be going to Erbil, Iraq to the new UAE refugee camps. We will be going to Egypt um, and to the UAE refugee camps in Greece as well. And um, Larissa, not to jump the gun, but uh, there have been other events that you've attended locally as well, that Beacon of Hope has been part of as well, right? Yes. Um, most recently, the Happiness Festival in Dubai. We're here at the Mother of the Nation Festival. Um, and we work with schools here in the UAE as well, which again, I will elaborate on as we move forward. But it's organically a UAE initiative, and it's very important that... Um, the message of the UAE and the participation of the UAE is brandished all over everything that we do, no matter where we are in the globe. The very first mission that we went on was to Liberia in October. And we were really in our infancy. Um, we were only six months old at that time. Our light was really still being concepted. Um, which it will be ongoing. This, we will always be refining and developing our light. But um, it was really a new initiative at that point. And um, we went to Liberia with two members of my team. And you think you know about poverty, and you think you know about energy poverty, and you think you know about Africa until your plane lands in Liberia, and the first thing you see is a sign that says Ebola is real at the Monrovia International Airport, which is no more than a shack. And getting off the plane, they take our temperatures, make sure that we are not bringing Ebola into the country again, which Liberia was the country that was most impacted by the, the Ebola outbreak um, two short years ago. And they still haven't recovered from it? Mm, very well. slowly. Yeah. Um, Liberia is an impoverished nation, yeah. completely impoverished. I mean, unemployment is about 80%. So when you throw an, a very... Um, devastating and impactful disease such as Ebola on a nation that just takes it backwards that much further. But um, we visited schools in Liberia with our lights and in tandem with ACON. And also a, a secondary aspect to Beacon of Hope, which is we call it the life aspect, is we work with the Sheikh Zayed Institute in Washington, D.C. And one of our team members is authorized to administer two mobile applications to infants in the pediatric wards in the hospitals. One is the MGene app, which through photographs, they can tell if a child has birth defects or syndromes, which um, our team member, Sarah Bowazir, she can immediately transmit those photos to Washington and through using complex algorithms, they can determine if these children have these defects. The other is StethAid app, which is a stethoscope that essentially plugs into a mobile phone and she can transmit the heartbeat of a newborn to Washington, D.C. and they can tell if the child has a life-threatening heart murmur. It's sort of a side aspect to where Beacon of Hope started. But we visited hospitals in Liberia and it's, it's shocking the, the most, the main main hospital in a nation is so impoverished and no air conditioning, no hygiene. Um, and um, we met the nation's only OBGYN. Now keep in mind in the NICU there's doctors everywhere and you think they're OBGYNs and they're not. They're podiatrists and urologists who have to do their time in the pediatric ward as well. Li Liberia has one OBGYN, and Liberia only has 70 doctors for the whole country. Can they you elaborate on OBGYN? For a man, <laughs> obstetrics and gynecology, yes. babies. Yes. 
Um, but for a country to only have 70 doctors, they had 100 until 25 were killed during the Ebola outbreak. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we went to schools and we went to rural Liberia. And um, going to the school in rural Liberia, which was a five-hour car ride, which should have only been an hour, but it's all dirt roads, and it's not solid dirt roads. It's, it's really um, mountainous dirt roads. But all of the homes, the mud huts, some are only poles holding up a roof, and an entire family lives underneath that. There's no electricity, which isn't evident until you're on your way back out at night after the sun has gone down, and it's completely pitch black. And yeah. I just want to say, just for the audience, if you want to uh, get a more visual idea of what Larissa is talking about, there's a lot of images on the Instagram account of Beacon of Hope. So if you just check out Beacon of Hope UAE on Instagram, you'll see quite a lot of visuals, and also on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. But this was our first exposure to how, just how much this, this simple solar light kit makes an impact because we had a small girl that assembled the light and after the light came on, she started to cry and it wasn't because she was afraid of it, it was simply because she realized the night wouldn't be so dark. And it's a measure of security and while we think of a light as some, a tool to do our homework or to read a book, for her it was personal security because in Liberia almost 80% of nine-year-old girls have been sexually assaulted because the night is so dark. Um, so that was where we first got a glimpse of the power of this small solar light. And we were there in tandem with ACON, which has proven to be a very strong collaboration for us. Um, he puts solar street lights all over Africa, and he works with us and our team to actually sit with the children, most of whom have no idea who he is, and he assembles the lights with them. Our next mission was to Morocco for COP22, and we ventured, and Marrakesh was polished because the eyes of the world were on Marrakesh at that time, but we ventured into rural Morocco and um, went to an orphanage where we held a light assembly event two times at this orphanage. The first day was with Akon and Bertrand Picard, who is the pilot of the Solar Impulse. They both joined us to help the children assemble their lights. Um, and, and again, the children also got their books from Dubai Care Reading Nation. And um, then the second day we were joined by um, His Excellency Dr. Thani Zayudi, the UAE Minister of Climate Change and Environment, who has become our ambassador. He goes with us everywhere. He is um, a champion of Beacon of Hope, and we are very blessed and honored to have um, Dr. Thani's support. But we went to these, this orphanage, and... Um, as of 2016, adoption is illegal in Morocco. The only way you can adopt a child is if a child is completely without any family and then they can only be adopted by a male Moroccan and Muslim. Um, and last year, 7,000 newborns were abandoned at birth in Morocco because in rural Morocco, with poverty as it is, women resort to prostitution and then are prosecuted for having a child out of wedlock. So 7,000 babies were abandoned and they wind up in orphanages and now can never be adopted. And um, these children hold a very special place in our hearts. Um, because they are happy in spite of their circumstances. And that's one of the strong messages that impacted us as we go trying to teach children. Much of the lesson is actually um, given back to us in return. But um, in the picture, you can see Dr. Thani with a little girl at the orphanage. Um, are they able to uh, assemble it as quickly as... So the evolution of the light has been interesting because when it started out, it needed, and this is where American English differs from English for the rest of the world because we say soldering and you all say soldiering. It needed soldiering. Um, and then it progressed to only needing a screwdriver. And now the light can be completely assembled with just snap connectors. So children as young as seven years old have absolutely no problem. The directions are photo instructions, so it's easy to follow. Um, it takes a seven-year-old 10 minutes. It takes me 45 minutes, <laughs> but I learned. <laughs> um, but the light is very simple to assemble, and it is constantly undergoing a metamorphosis. And in fact, in line with sustainability right now, we're looking at a concept for the light that will bring the box into part of the actual 
actual design of the light in that one side will be opaque with a reflective material inside and then the light can go back in the box and the box essentially becomes the lamp, mm. entirely sustainable. Um, in the picture you can see Bertrand Picard again with one of the uh, orphans. He's the pilot of the solar impulse um, a, and obviously he's a big proponent for solar energy which is which is the main focus for what our light concept is. Um, these are some of the, the children. Um, the little boy sitting on my lap. I know that adoption is illegal because I actually tried to adopt him. He was abandoned in a cave and found when he was just days old. Um, and so happy and he attached himself to me and didn't want to let go and therefore I didn't want to let go. It was very difficult and emotional. Uh, how, how long do you usually spend, how many days do you spend at a mission approximately, how long do you take? It depends on how many schools we're visiting or what the plan is. Um, we were in Morocco for a full week um, and we were in Jordan for five days. So it, it depends on how much of a schedule we have before we go, how many schools we can impact and, and we really want to focus and make an impact. We don't want to go as a token visit where we spend 10 minutes just to say we were there and we're out the door. We actually go and sit with the children. And that was evidenced last week um, in Jordan um, in that we had some very, it, this was a very impactful trip for us because the collaboration, which collaboration is the most important part of any initiative because together we are that much stronger. And going along with us, just for Beacon of Hope, was Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan bin Khalifa al Nahyan, who is the chairman of the Sultan bin Khalifa Humanitarian and Scientific Foundation, which is the foundation under which Beacon of Hope falls. We also had His Excellency Dr. Thani al Zayudi, the Minister of uh, climate Change and Environment. We had Her Excellency Shama al Mazrui, the Minister of Youth Travel with us. We had His Excellency Dr. Mohammed uh, Al Falahi, who is the Secretary General of the Red Crescent. Um, and of course, we had ACON. And they all came to the UAE, well, th those who were here, and they all traveled with us to Jordan specifically for Beacon of Hope. And every single one of them was sitting on the floor helping children assemble their lights. And um, Her Highness Sheikh Shama bin Sultan was able to go with us on this particular mission and she herself was on the floor assembling, assembling lights. And um, this was the first time that I actually was able to assemble the light. I always take pictures because I am not technical and I had no choice but to do it and now I'm an expert. Uh, I saw on social media that uh, <laughs> because of the impact that uh, Her Highness Sheikh Shamma had on the families, that like they even named the newborn after her, They right? did. We visited the uh, hospital that is associated with our Marji Belfood UAE refugee camp in Al Mafraq in Jordan. And um, when we arrived, there happened to be two newborn babies, a boy and a girl, and they named the boy Zayed after Sheikh Zayed, and they named the girl Shama after Sheikh Shama. Um, but we, uh, we visited these refugee camps, and the one thing that impacted us most was that these children, despite their circumstances, um, and being displaced and away from their homes and their toys still find a way to be happy and laugh and play. And it shows us that regardless of what we think is wrong in our life, there is no excuse not to be happy and that the power to be happy remains regardless of your circumstances. Um, but Jordan was a very impactful mission and you can see that we had the, um, from left to right, we had Her Excellency Shama al Mazrui, the Minister of Youth. Um, and Akon and Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan and Dr. Thani and Dr. Mohammed from the General Secretary General of the Red Crescent. The Red Crescent is so important to everything Beacon of Hope does because the Red Crescent, uh, through the Red Crescent, we are able to go on our missions. Um, we are able to seek sponsorship and fundraising. And um, the Red Crescent is such an essential part of everything that we do. And we're grateful for, for their support. It's a great all-star team, you know, it's, uh, and you have people from it every is. different sector. And for an initiative and in its infancy, to have in the endorsement and sponsorship and collaboration of people such as ACON and our cabinet ministers from here in the UAE, it's, um, it's, it's very, 
it's, it's very important to us, and it shows that we've hit all the right targets. Yeah. We work with youth. It's sustainability, um, solar and renewable energy. It's, it's bringing awareness to energy poverty, and most importantly, it's youth philanthropy. Yeah. And um, the youth philanthropy aspect comes from the fact that not only do we work with children in globally challenged regions, but we work with children here in the UAE going to schools where we teach children to assemble the same light and instead of keeping the light, the light goes back into the box along with a message of friendship and empathy and we take these lights then with these messages from the children here in the UAE and we deliver them to the children who are too young to assemble their own light. So it's, mess it's essentially a gift, the haves giving to the have-nots and it's um, teaching the concept of youth philanthropy here that you don't always get something tangible in return. What you get in return is, is usually something much greater. I think it's beautiful because uh, especially the fact that Oops, you know sorry. the children here probably don't see how blessed we are. We have all these resources. Apparently we have a video, the video playing now. Um, CNN did a lovely video for us and this essentially shows what Beacon of Hope is fundamentally. Uh, Thank you, Becky. It's, just, it's heartbreaking. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> and I feel honored to be part of this movement that would help children around the world. What we're doing is we're putting together this um, circuit that is solar powered. These children here today assembled these light boxes and they'll be uh, going along with us on our next missions to children that just a simple light in their life will actually make a difference. Many times this is the only access to artificial light that they have. Uh, most chase the sun home to be able to do homework. You look at the children of the UAE and their assembly of these beacons in a box. It's for imparting a message of youth philanthropy. The haves giving to the have-nots. If one child is propelled forward because of a light that was assembled in 10 minutes here in the UAE, then we've made a measurable impact on society. We have to look after those people and we have to look for those people and see how can we uh, can, can do small things which can have a huge impact in their lives. So the way forward is um, this year we are on track to deliver over 70,000 lights. And in a time when sponsorships are floundering um, due to, you know, more fiscal responsibility and tightening of belts, um, we have essentially found a way to make this a social enterprise is in that companies now is making this as part of their CSR initiative will buy the beacons, we will put their logo on the box, and we will take it with us to some of the regions that we um, traveled to. Um, Majid al Futaim has been a, a great supporter of us, NASDAQ Dubai, um, and um, we are encouraging companies to look at Beacon of Hope for their own um, corporate social responsibility, enabling us to deliver light and literacy um, around the globe. We are very thankful to Dubai Cares. Uh, without their collaboration, we wouldn't be able to take books along with our lights. And we saw just how important this simple ABC book was when we were in Liberia, where it's essentially a one-room classroom um, where children are sitting on pallets and you have kids as young as five and kids as old as 13 who have never had a book. And the teachers have no books to teach from. So to get this book from Dubai Cares was impactful for them because now she had a resource from which to teach and the children all had a book to take home. And I can promise you that that book will not just be tossed into a corner. It will definitely be a cherished part of that child's life. So we thank Dubai Cares for allowing us to take books along, along with us.
And uh, Larissa, the other question I had is, uh, how can people like volunteer to Beacon of Hope? What do you suggest? How do they speak to? What do they do? How do they move forward? important aspects of any initiative, um, community involvement, and uh, we encourage people to reach out to, to us. You can visit us um, at our, through Instagram. Um, we're Beacon of Hope UAE, and um, you can contact me. You can um, reach us at our website, beaconofhopeuae.com, um, and we encourage people to volunteer and we don't just want you to come out and um, help us at a bake sale. We want to utilize the skills that people have. If you're a graphic designer or if you are good at public speaking or if you're a teacher and you work with children, we want you to work with us utilizing the skills that you essentially um, are strongest in because what you're good at will, will make us that much stronger on our own. Uh, this year, uh, our president, uh, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed uh, uh, bin Sultan Al Nahyan, announced that 2017 is the year of giving. Yes. How has the response been from the private sector in terms of being part of this initiative? Well, the year of this being the year of giving here in the UAE, this initiative is has, has such an impact on that because not only are we giving on behalf of the UAE to children outside of the UAE, but we allow companies through CSR to be able to give, you know, with with the beacons going in their name to these regions. Um, but we allow people to give of their time, mm. and um, human resource is one of the most important. Um, ingredients in the success of any initiative mm. and uh, so we encourage people in this year of giving to consider using Beacon of Hope as your tool mm. um, to achieve that um, mandate mm -hmm. on behalf of If government. someone was to financially contribute to the box can you give us an average what what is the price go for? Um, generally when you purchase a beacon from us and you have the option to buy one um, when you buy that beacon you can take it home and keep it mm -hmm. but it allows us to then donate a light forward to another child one of the things that we suggest to people is if that if, if you buy a beacon write a message and put it back inside that box and allow that box to be donated in your name to a child somewhere in the world. The ones that the people are assembling here at the Mother of the Nation Festival uh, and putting messages in will be going to Erbil, Iraq, uh, to the children in the UAE refugee camps. Uh, so I have more questions, but I just want to see if there's any question from the audience. No questions? Okay. So the other question I had, Larissa, is um, I understand that Her Highness uh, Sheikh Hashemma wants to have Beacon of Hopes in different parts of the world, like sat almost like satellite offices of Beacon of Hope, and it's, it becomes uh, almost like other charities around the world that have an uh, in international uh, presence. So this initiative, which I still maintain is in its infancy, um, has taken off at rocket speed and it has endorsement on such high levels and for those of us who have been a part of Beacon of Hope um, from from the very first day and in Sheikh Hashama and I initially and the first person to come on board um, is my fellow co-chair Saud and um, Sarah and Mohammed and Thorea and um, Afra for those of us, we watched this grow, and it's gone very quickly. And as fast as it's gone, and as much as it has been embraced, it allows us to ha look at this with very aggressive, say, five-year plans. Um, and we would like to see Beacon of Hope with chapters all over the world, whether it's Beacon of Hope Europe or Beacon of Hope North America, where we can potentially impact the challenged regions of South America. Um, there are corporations all over the world who are interested now in making Beacon of Hope their CSR. Beacon um, of Hope and make an impact that is that much stronger. Um, encouraging volunteers globally, encouraging companies globally, and, and allowing us to essentially have chapters all over the globe that can make an impact. Uh, you've also had uh, conversations with the UN 
right? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? So the UN Foundation um, has embraced Beacon of Hope, and you know, we will be working with them next month to do a light assembly event in Washington, D.C., and uh, in line with the um, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which are the foundation of everything Her Highness Sheikh Hashanah does, um, we can essentially make an impact to the environment, to society, and to the global economy. Um, you know, you say, how can benefiting one child have a significant impact? But when you consider that if you empower that one child to see beyond their circumstances, and that child who is trapped in rural Liberia grows up to be the next great innovator or scientist or finds a cure to a disease, we've made an impact. But if you consider that if that one child leaves and goes on to greatness and finds a way to make an impact, every one of their descendants benefits. So one child, you can have an impact on thousands. Uh, it's, it's one of, you know, Larissa, we spoke a lot about the initiative and everything, but j just you, Larissa Miller, that, like, where, where did this all come from? What inspired you to start all this? Like, what, what, you know, did you do this when you were younger, perhaps? Did you like, do a lot of volunteering? In, in the initiative people? is innately Her Highnesses. Yeah. Um, Sheikh Ashama, being, like I said, being a proponent of sustainability, wanted to find a way to impact youth, um, have an impact on sustainability. And um, like I said, we started working with the Young Engineering Minds at Khalifa University, and it evolved organically. And for me to be privileged to not only work with such an inspiring young mind as Sheikh Hashama, but um, to watch the evolution of this and to essentially be um, a f the face of Beacon of Hope and to have such a great team to work with, it's been um, impactful in ways that I never imagined. To see these children and to touch these children and to talk to these children and to have these children smile and laugh and play and hug and love, all things that you think are impossible given the circumstances that they deal with. We met um, a young girl named Reem at our Marajib camp in Jordan last week. She sang the most beautiful song and her parents were both killed in Aleppo. And she has no siblings, he has no aunts and uncles, she is entirely alone. Happiest girl. And that was really a moment for all of us when we realized that the power to be happy remains regardless of what your circumstances are. Yeah, that's incredible. Sorry, there's many more questions. Okay, there's no questions uh, from the audience. Uh, Larissa, thank you very, very much for My this pleasure. amazing uh, uh, introduction to Beacon of Hope and uh, because of the year of giving and of course, uh, Mother of the Nation Festival, it's a, it's a great platform to have a discussion on such an initiative. Uh, Her Highness, Sheikha Fatma bin Timbarak, um, uh, we, we've, if, you, if you had a chance to visit the pavilion, you'll see some of the values that she's uh, been promoting, including empowering women, uh, education, uh, sustainability, you can see it all around the festival uh, and, uh, and Beacon of Hope being uh, a big ambassador for sustainability and uh, sharing knowledge uh, and light uh, through this amaz amazing box. Uh, I think it's, it's great what you're oh. doing and uh, uh, please pass our regards and thanks to Her Highness Sheikh Hashama as well. Uh, for, for creating such an initiative and uh, you know we're, we're hoping that uh, SAFE will be lucky to try to get more volunteers through this uh, platform today and, uh, and in other initiatives as well but uh, thank you so much for sharing well, this amazing story. On behalf story. of Her Highness we thank the Mother of the Nation Festival for hosting us involved and make us part of your CSR and we encourage all of you regardless of what initiative you choose choose something that means something to you and make a difference in this year of giving. One more time, a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa, and thank you, everyone. We'll see you in the next session. Thank you.